Hi guys, um, Terry here. Um, in this video, I'm going to be looking at the solutions to the January 2020 paper, right? Um, first thing guys, please hit like and subscribe to my channel, right? Okay, so question one, um, using a calculator or otherwise calculate the exact value of this here, right? Now we have a fraction here. We have four and one fifth multiplied by two, two t multiplied by one third minus one and a quarter, right? Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the multiplication first. So we have four and one fifth multiplied by one third. So four and one fifth can be written as four fives are twenty. That's twenty one over five multiplied by one third, right? Now, this 3 can go into this 21 7 times, so we end up with 7 over 5, right? Which is actually 1 and 2 fifths, right? So that is what this here is equal to. This is 1 and 2 fifths, right? Minus 1 and a quarter, right? Now, 1 minus 1 is going to give me 0, so therefore, all I really need to work out here is 2 fifths minus. minus a quarter, right? Now, in this case here, my LCM is gonna be 20, five into 24, four twos are eight, right? Minus four into 25, five by one gives me five, and therefore this here, eight minus five is gonna give me three. So this answer here is going to be three over 20, right? So that's my, um, that's my exact answer here, right? Now, the next thing that we wanna do now, so this is part E, um, in part B, we want to work out this 4.1 minus 1.25 squared, right, over 0 0.005, right? Now, for this one, I'm going to use the calculator. So, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to square the 1.25. So, 1.25 squared is going to give me 1.5625. All over 0 0.005, right? And this here is going to be the numerator is going to give me 2.5375 divided by 0 0.005. And when I work this out, I am going to get 5. 107.5, right? I'm going to get 507.5, right? So this is my answer for this part. Now the next part of the question here now, um, a stadium currently has seating capacity for 15,400 seats. Calculate the number of people in the stadium when 75% of the seats are occupied. Well, for this part here, all we need to do, we need to find 75%, which is 75 over 100, multiplied by 15,400 over one, right? So what we're doing is simply finding 75% of that. So that is 75 over 100 multiplied by 15,400, and that's gonna give me 11,550, right? So this is how many people um, are in the stadium, right? 11,550, right? Now, the next thing that we want to work out here, the stadium is to be renovated with a new seating capacity of 20,790. After the renovation, what will be the percentage increase? So to get my percentage increase, right? All we're going to do, we're going to take what the final value is, which is a new seating capacity of uh, 20,790. We're going to minus what the current capacity is, which is 15,400. And you're going to divide by what your original capacity was, which is 15,400. So that's how you work out percentage increase. You take what your new value is now, subtract the initial value, and divide by the initial value. And we want percentage increase, so we have to multiply by 100. So when I work this out here, I'm going to get 20790 minus 15400 divided by 15400 multiplied by 100 and that's going to give me 35 percent 
right? So this here is going to be 35%, right? Now the next part here, part C, they said a neon light flashes five times every 10 seconds, right? Flashes five times every 10 seconds. Um, show that the light flashes 43,200 times in one day, right? Now, we're talking about one day here, but we know that it's flashing five times every 10 seconds. So what we need to do is to figure out how many seconds we have in one day to begin with, right? So number of seconds in one day, right? So let's start. We have 24 hours in one day, right? In one hour, we have 60 minutes. So you multiply by 60 to convert hours to minutes. Then we have to multiply by next 60 if we want to convert to seconds, right? So therefore, this is going to be 24 multiply by 60, multiply by 60. So what I'm doing here, I'm converting one day into seconds, right? So this is 86,400 seconds, right? Um, now, they tell us that it's flashing 10 times, sorry, five times every 10 seconds. So we need to find the number of 10 seconds that we have in this figure here. So number of 10 second intervals right, is simply going to be 86400 all over um, 10. So that's going to be 8640, right? Right? And then we to figure out how many flashes we have. So we know that every 10 second interval we have um, five flashes. So number of flashes right, is simply going to be 8640, because this is how many 10 second intervals we have, multiplied by 5. Right? So if I multiply 8640 by 5, I am going to get 43,000. 200 right which is yeah so this is what we wanted to prove so that's it there for that question right uh, let's do question two one time okay so we want to factorize this here right um the first part we have 5 h squared minus 12 h g right um so the method we're going to use here is my hcf method right um, no numbers common between 5 and 12, but you have h common. So what I'm going to do, the hcf of h squared and h, right, is going to be h. So this is going to be open brackets, 5h minus 12g. So that's what I'm going to get when I factorize this. For the second part, you want to factorize this here, which is a quadratic, right? Now to factorize this quadratic here, we know that we should get two brackets, right? And you want to get 2x squared, right? So how we can get that is to have 2x here and have x here. Now to get this minus 6 here, right, there are different possibilities. You can go 1 and minus 6. You can go minus 6 and 1. You can go 2 and minus 3. You can go minus 2 and 3, right? One of those combinations um, will give us the answer. Right, but we have to use a middle term in order to figure out um, what we're going to do there. Right, so I'm going to try, let's say, uh, let's write I try 3 and minus 2. Um, 2 by x is 2x squared, 3 by 2 to the 4. I put a plus here and a minus here. Right, now try to understand what's happening here. To get my middle term, sorry, to get my first term, which is 2x squared, I have to take this and multiply by this. So 2x by x, yes, I'm getting 2x squared. To get the last term, which is a 6, 3 by minus 2, right, will give me minus 6. So we're good here. Now to get the middle term, what we normally do, we have to multiply these two, right, which in this case is going to give me 3x. And I have to multiply these two, right, which is going to give me minus 4x. Now to get this middle term here, all we need to do is to take this 3x and add it to this here. 
So 3x minus 4x is going to give me minus x. So therefore, this answer is correct. That's how we factorize this quadratic here. Next one, we want to um, solve this equation here. So we have r plus 3 is equal to 3, open brackets, r minus 5, right? So r plus 3 is equal to, we need to remove the brackets. So 3 by r gives me 3r. And then 3 by minus 5 gives me minus 15. So we're going to carry all the r's to one side. So r minus 3r is equal to minus 15 minus 3. r minus 3r is going to give me minus um, 2r, which is equal to minus 18, right? So therefore, r is equal to minus 18 over minus 2. So therefore, r is equal to positive 9, right? Next one, we want to make k the subject of the formula, right? So we have 2a is equal to pi k squared plus 3t. Now, one of the um, challenges that I realize a lot of students had, what they were trying to do with respect to pi is to actually write pi as 3.14, right? Please don't do that for this particular question. We are leaving pi as pi. It's a constant, and we're going to leave that as is. We're not going to do anything with it. So... What I'm going to do, since I want to make k the subject, I'm going to write this over as pi k squared plus 3t is equal to 2a. So therefore, let's let's ensure we only have k on the left side. So first thing is to get rid of that um, plus 3t. So pi k squared is equal to 2a minus 3t. So let's get rid of the pi now. So k squared is equal to 2a minus 3t all over pi and now to figure out what k is we just need to find the square root so this is going to be 2a minus 3t over pi and we are finding the square root of all of this right so that's going to be my answer for that part right Now, the next part of the question here, um, a farmer plants two crops, potatoes and corn, on a 10-hectare piece of land. The number of hectares of corn planted is C, and the number, oh, sorry, the number of hectares of corn planted C must be at least twice the number of hectares of potatoes P, right? Two inequalities. Now, they gave us a land um, restriction here. They said it's a 10-acre 10 10 acre plot of land, right? So my first inequality, if I take the number of corns hectares of corn planted and I add that to the number of potatoes planted, I cannot exceed 10 acres of land. So therefore, that has to be less than or equal to 10 acres of land, right? So you can plant both of them, right? But we know that the maximum of, um, area of land that we have is 10 hectares, right? So that's one inequality. Now, the second one here, they said that the number of hectares of corn planted must be at least, it must be at least twice, right, the number of potatoes planted. So, if I have to translate that into words, that means that the amount of corn, right, amount of hectares of corn has to be greater than or equal to 2p, right? Because it said the amount of hectares of corn must be at least twice. When you see at least, that means greater than or equal to. Right? That's what that means here. All right, guys. So this is question, um, question one and two, right? So please hit like and subscribe. And yes, um, lots of people have been asking me. Yes, I do give online classes, right? Um, you can contact me at this WhatsApp number, right? I do um, CSEC maths, ad maths, physics, and um, chemistry. Right, guys? Take care.